All right, everyone, if you can put on your headsets, go to channel green. If you have any issues, raise your hand. I can come help you out. But ready to kick off this next session, we have Jeffrey Stovall from Zebra, who's a senior engineering manager, and Doug Mismash, enterprise cloud architect at Google Cloud. Let's give it up for them. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Stovall. I'm a senior engineering manager at Zebra, although I feel a bit like the Wizard of Oz in the Emerald City up here with the green background. <laughs> The, um, I've been with Zebra about six years, and fun fact, I have a law degree from University of Chicago Law School. Hey everyone, I'm Doug Mismash. I'm a principal architect with Google Cloud. I've been with Google for just over two years. This did my anniversary in July. Uh, I've been working with Zebra for over a year and a half now. Uh, I'm dedicated, so I work across with Jeff and pretty much every one of their product engineering teams and corporate side. So Jeff, uh, you want to talk a little bit about, you know, introduce us to who Zebra is, right? Yeah, so Zebra is, um, largely been a, a hardware company, so we make all sorts of different hardware from printers to RFID to handhelds. To, and um, if you've seen the badges you're all wearing, those are printed on Zebra printers up there. We even do the um, technology the NFL uses to track players on the field, is Zebra technology. So um, we've been moving more into the software space lately, so that's, that's where I'm in. I'm in the software group, and we're, we're, we built a platform that we'll be talking about today, so. Okay, great. So can we start with maybe like the business objective or business case, like what was the challenges of why the Savannah platform was required? Yeah, so Zebra has millions of devices out there and they all needed a place to be able to call home and communicate and build applications without having to have a million different applications on the device um, to do these different applications that we're trying to build software solutions around to sell. So that's really where the Savannah platform came as a unified home for the Zebra. So part of the data, the biggest part of the data we have is device running metrics data. So if you've ever had like your iPhone or Android where asked, do you want to send information to Apple about how this device is running so they can move their devices? That's that kind of data we're collecting on the devices. Well, and um, I was going to say, you also look, how do you use that data, right? So there's, there's use cases that what are you doing with the data, but then there's also what are your customers, you know, like other software business unit uh, product teams? Yeah. So. What we do, we, we use that data not only to improve our devices, but also to improve our customer experience. We, we have several applications that we can use to sell that data, modify that data, run machine learning on the data, offer insights to our customers on that data. Um, a lot of our customers have not just like 10 Zebra devices, they have 100,000 Zebra devices. So it's almost like a commodity. So this allows us to run machine learning and say, hey, these batteries and some of your devices are probably going to go bad, so you need to get new replacements. And, you know, some of your devices haven't reported or don't have the latest security patches, things like that. So. Got it. So let's talk about the platform a little bit. You know, yeah. can you walk us through, like, what are that, the, the platform architecture and what type of technologies you're leveraging? Yeah, the platform we built is, is a highly scalable, highly available microservice architecture, um, primarily Java, but it's all running in Google Kubernetes Engine. Um, we leverage a lot of GCP technologies, and we're leveraging Mongo Atlas as our um, operational data store. Uh, we have, as I said, millions of devices connected, sending data up through the day. We get terabytes of data up through this platform today from device data. Uh, we have to support a lot of different solutions, so our APIs, having that flexibility of the document store helps with that um, from an API perspective for those different solutions. Uh, we have different protocols for devices, too, because different devices connect in different fashions um, for sending data up and down. Um, yeah, and we use uh, leverage BigQuery. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, <laughs> sorry, Doug. We leverage BigQuery as our um, data analytics warehouse for all this data coming in to feed our machine learning and analytics a lot of these applications. Okay, and I think we got a nice slide here that really kind of visualize like what you just kind of talked about, but then if you look at where Savannah sits and what it does from some of that foundational data, on the right side we have, these are your other product teams within the software business unit. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through a little bit like, you know, where, what they're, those use cases or what they're trying to solve for, what yeah. features they have, and then, you know, so I know Mongo's leveraged outside of mm -hmm. um, just Savannah, right? Yeah, so, so Mongo's leveraging a lot of these solutions. So um, Zebra data services are API services we offer for customers to build applications off of. One of our most popular is our print from anywhere, from your printers. Uh, we have Workforce Connect um, allows for push-to-talk solutions and profile management so someone can walk from, like, let's say, the hardware department to the paint department and automatically, so you can just say, I want to talk to someone in the paint department, pick it up, handle things like that, and that uses Mongo in the also, back. Yeah, it's not just that, it also tells me what kind of 
role I'm going to be there. I, I mean, I paint guy that it has PBX integration. Yeah. It does, like you said, push and talk is that walkie talkie like feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it does a whole lot. Uh, Visibly IQ is uh, the, our analytics and AI platform on that large amounts of device data so we can sell that, help our customers get the most out of their zebra fleet of devices um, with that data. Uh, is a solution for being able to optimize tasks for your employees so they know what they do and at what time to do it. And, uh, and that's one that you know, it has MongoDB, right? It's yeah, that uses MongoDB heavily for that. Yeah. Okay. that and all of these are also running in GCP, <laughs> so, or will be soon for some of them. Yeah. Um, Zebra Prescriptive Analytics is an uh, AI platform that analyzes inventory for trends and says, you know, you, you sell this amount per data per day, you know, the, today you're not selling it, you should send someone out to look and, you know, see things like that. Yeah. Um, also fraud detection, right? Yeah, fraud Take detection. a point of sale data, inventory data, being mm -hmm. able to run that analytics on it, and then provide that to your customer base on yeah. where there's fraud detection. Yeah, and workforce management is a, a solution for optimizing your workforce utilization. So you can optimize you know, when people ship off, what's, what's the best way to optimize So it helps you be able to do more with less with your headcount. Got it. Yeah. So and then many more. <laughs> it's not moving forward to the architecture right. here? Uh, there, there we go. go. Here's the uh, simplified architecture diagrams. You can see we have devices communicating to our uh, GKE cluster. We're running our microservices. Those microservices are all built on top of Mongo as our operational data store. But then we ship it off into Google PubSub, Dataflow, and into BigQuery. I'll let Doug speak a bit about yeah. those technologies. So yeah, as part of that pipeline, PubSub is our, our fully managed messaging service that then goes to our Dataflow, which handles all that data processing. And then we have our serverless enterprise data warehouse where BigQuery, and I believe that's where all that historical data is where you reside, right, in mm -hmm. the BigQuery, correct? Yep, yeah, all the historical data lands in. So with Mongo, because you're sending so much data, we can't store all of it, or Mongo would just get massive for that. So yeah, the historical data goes into BigQuery, and we keep the, the latest, most recent data about the devices in Mongo. Cool. So what about, you know, why MongoDB, right? Like, why did you guys choose MongoDB? Why did you need a document database as opposed to a traditional database? Yeah. So we chose Mon MongoDB because we're working with all these different kinds of devices and all these different applications. Our data model, while we share some base characteristics, is very fluid, it changes. So a document really makes a lot of sense for us. We don't have a defined schema for our document. And the schema also changes. You know, there may be one application that suddenly needs to set up more data from the device. You don't have to modify your uh, SQL database for that. You can just send it and it gets stored and it what just works. Functional, non-functional requirements, whether it's scalability, flexibility, the illities, right? Like, is there some yeah. other use, you know, Yeah, why? so, I mean, since we have so many devices talking to it, we really need to be able to scale and also be highly available to support all of these. And um, a NoSQL document store style database like Mongo really handles that a lot better than a traditional SQL, so we're able to scale out both horizontally and vertically to meet um, our needs for the, what we have. And anyway, our next, I think, kind of transitions there as well into yes. like why. Yeah, and then the final point is from a development perspective, MongoDB is really easy to work with. It's, you know, it's been around for a while, it's open source, there's a lot of adoption. I can have a MongoDB Pull the buffer machine in five minutes. Just download it and pop it up, and it's there. And is so. is the architecture today multi-region? Are you across multi-zones? Like how, distri how distributed and available? Is yeah, the, yeah. So um, in order to get the nine that everybody wants the application, so we have multi-region, uh, multi-hot region, automatic regional failover. Which is nice in that case. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so we get uh, we run multi-zonal as well um, within each of those regions. So we've got availability with that. So then, uh, you know, why Atlas? So, so why Atlas? So doing things like scaling and having those uptime and multi-region and multi-zonal, Atlas makes that really easy. It's just a click of a button. It does it all for you. You don't have to worry about all the configuration on your own side of getting the deployed. Things talk to each other properly. Um, it's also really nice for you can do things like update your database very quickly with no downtime. They just said seven went GA today, and I told my guys on the phone, hey, let's upgrade to seven. They already have our dev environments upgraded to seven in Atlas, which was awesome. Um, so yeah, it makes it really easy to work in, which frees up developers and SREs to do other things like, you know, build the other important stuff that yeah, I think like it, that kind of like from the time before you talked about, we built a lot of like open. It sounds like you guys have really started to do the Vibers build, a lot of that. Mm -hmm. What could you get more managed? How do you free up your resources to do things that are more 
above the value line, right, mm -hmm. of, of where they can be working on things that are going to be more uh, monetization as opposed to mm -hmm. keeping the lights on, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the Mongo app really helps with that. Um, the other thing is we've added a lot of value out of Atlas Search before we moved to Mongo. We were running um, Elasticsearch stack where we would, for, you know, try to duplicate data over there, which is not the easiest thing to do. And you know, sometimes if things break down, data gets out of sync. It's a real pain to get that back. So Mongo at, sir, Atlas Search, very awesome. I mean, you just create your search index. It does it all behind the scenes. You don't have to worry about it at all. It would make, make things much easier. We had a, one particular use case where we're running machine learning off of image metadata. They need to run regex search queries, which if you run those in Mongo, they get, as our data collection's growing, those are getting slower and slower because it has to parse even if it's indexed, the whole index. So, um, but moving to search, we're able to, you know, run those and keep that cost, and, and it also lowers the cost too because, you know, that was taking up a lot of CPU time running those in uh, regex searches, so that it's actually been very effective for us. I think you got one more there too, Yes, right? I do. <laughs> I got three. Oh. Oh, and Atlas auto scaling has been really useful for us too for cost effective reason. Our data on the way devices connect is very bursty. So like during the work hours, we'll get a lot more connections off time and not so much. So Mongo has some auto scaling built on so you can scale up and down easily with no downtime and, that, and you know, save money in our deployments. All right, my favorite, why, why G Google Cloud Platform? Yeah, why Google Cloud Platform? Well, we were a very early adopter of, uh, adopter of Kubernetes. We were on, I think, before it was even one point. Um, for it, and uh, GKE is the best in breed for Kubernetes, running Kubernetes. Um, running and talking about freeing up your DevOps and SDK to do more important things. That's uh, GKE really helped us do that. And newer products like Anthos are very valuable because we have all these different applications using us. It lets us connect our different clusters, and um, you know, keep those all together in one management plane. So that big query, that's our enterprise data warehouse. Again, like, I think you spoke a little bit about like what type of data goes to Mongo versus the data that you're doing and the use cases you have big query. Yeah, so big query stores not just our you know, data from the devices coming up, but all their other data too, because we do a lot of repair work and things. So we'll store the repair data, stores other data from like printers and things coming in different channels. And that allows us to give us a nice you know, area to analytics platform to run advanced machine learning off of. So we can say, you know, we have these devices reporting up they were sent in repair, we can you know, see what happened to those devices. Was there something we can predict, like if a device is gonna need a repair soon? Things like that is the power we get with having BigQuery as a data lake. Also, BigQuery is very cost effective for storage, so we're shipping bytes a day, but it doesn't really cost much for storage. You pay more on the searching on it, but when you're running you know, one analytics query per day, that's much more cost effective than other. We got one more, I believe, there, right? Yeah. Uh, security. So you speak a little yeah. bit about, you know, why Google Cloud, why did you look at it from a security yeah. aspect? Yeah, so Google Cloud has really improved security for applications and made it easy to work with. Um, workload identity for GK is really nice. You can um, handle your security for your different applications and workloads running in GK management at the console instead of having to have secrets and other things in your applications for that. Uh, so you don't have to rotate, do this. It's really nice to work with. They also have the Google Secret Manager when you do need to work with secrets in your applications. It has a nice built-in with uh, Java and GKE so you can bring it right into your applications. Don't have to have it coded anywhere and configuration just gets pulled right from there. And you can get permissions to that secret via workload identity. So it's, uh, it, uh, it works really well. Awesome. So as we look at, you know, you know, what's the better together story? So when we think about the MongoDB and Google Cloud, you know, why, why do them together versus separate, right? Like why not you choose one platform? Yeah, so we, we went with both because we needed, um, MongoDB is great for an operational data store. It runs really quickly, um, it, but it doesn't do those analytical queries uh, like BigQuery does in the same fashion. But BigQuery is rather slow when it does those queries. It's usually about a second to four seconds to come back because it's going through a lot of data and analyzing that. So it's not really appropriate for an operational data store when you have to need millisecond, you're running over. So that's why we found that working them together is better together in this case. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I think that from a slide perspective, we were gonna like wanted to leave some time for some Q and A. I don't know if there's any Q and A. If we do have a microphone, we could pass around. Otherwise, if people just want to come up after the session here, we can stick around up here and do any uh, Q and A. But I'm gonna pass the mic maybe back to her. Uh, sorry. 
there's no questions, though, I think we can get, we can yeah. adjourn. And again, if nobody wants to come up or, or you know, nobody wants to do it live, they can feel free to just kind of come up and we can do Q&A uh, kind of offline. Thank you. Great job, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs>